Okay, you lovely lot. So it's time to get all technical on you. And you know I don't really do technical, uh, but I keep getting shouted at, so I've got to go all technical. So we're on deep water fishing. Not for, well, for everything, not just for bream, for everything. Deep water ground bait fishing. Rigs wise then. So my go-to one, so we've got a couple for you today. My go-to one is, obviously depending on depth, we've got, it's probably smack bong, smack bong? <laughs> What am I on smack bong? Smack bang. How dare I? That's something else completely different there, folks. Do apologise. It is Christmas though, isn't it? Potatoes. Uh, it's pretty much smack bang on eight foot. Now, float wise, I'm going to say I pretty much always or exclusively go for a float that shape. You know, sort of like a little bit rugby ball-y rather than like, you know, your traditional Chianti style floats. I mean, we'll probably get away with it today because it's flat calm, but on open water, when, you know, obviously there's a chance of wind and undertone, this, that and the other, you've got to go with a, with a float that you can, you know, hold back against. So I've got a 0.8 on today. Now, usually it'll be, obviously, depending on depths, up to 10 foot, probably be a gram and a half. Um, but again, if it's calm, you can get away going a little bit lighter. But we've gone for, I'm going to say between a, a 0.6 and a 0.8, so like three quarters of a gram, something like that. Carbon stem, wire stem, we, with how we've got it shotted with like a, an Olivet and droppers, it doesn't really matter. Obviously, with the, the carbon, you're holding a tight line, you're watching it coming through, but obviously it's settling that quick. It's not going to make a blind bit of difference. I'm not going to say it is because the other rig I've got has got a wire stem. It really doesn't matter, folks. It's all what's happening in the bottom third of the rig, which we'll go through in a sec. So... Elastic wise, I only ever use a right fine elastic. I do like to give him a big strike though, uh, which is very important for setting a hook when he's striking against weight and obviously with a soft elastic. So this is a four to six hybrid elastic. Probably the best elastic in the whole wide world ever is like, uh, you know, the Preston original slip number fives or sixes though, but I ain't got any of that. So I'm not using it. Uh, so yeah, four to six hybrid. Then main line, we've got 0.15, you know, you want some pretty durable to be fair. You don't want to be fishing anything too fine because I want the option of if I need to, you know, move the shots uh, shots around and you don't want to be damaging your line. Back shots as always, just above the float, sort of like four to six inches away, we've got two number eights. And what's that? We've got getting on for sort of 20, 22 inches of line between portum and float. Again, I don't want to be coming really short, you know, sort of 10, 12 inches. That all goes out of the window because if that wind gets up and it's just blowing your rig around too much, you don't want that. So that's our float, carbon stem, rugby style body. Now coming down the rig, so I've got these on little babby fours, which is nice. We've got getting on that shot in there, Richard. So we've got a little babby Olivet, and then below that, I've got a, a series of number 11 shots. Just presentation wise, really, uh, just so it kicks that line away there and it's just reducing tangles. I've got two little Babby 11s just above it, just to lock it in place. Because where I have been caught out before, folks, is when you're using them Olivets, where you put like the little bit of silicon out, uh, put the silicon over them. I've had them fall off. And then if you haven't got any more Olivets to replace them, you've got to put a load of shots on. So get the ones where the line goes through the middle and you won't have that problem. So Olivets, what? I'm gonna say 20 inches away, something like that from me from the oak and then we've got on which i think is really important no matter what what kind of fish you're going for you know there's lots of roach in here lots of hide which yeah t lend themselves to feed off the bottom or through the water but i always tend to use big droppers eights or nines certainly if it was like purely skimmer fishing or boween fishing i'd definitely be using heavier droppers never less than a nine uh, but usually eights but in this case today we've got nines on so what are they they're probably three and a half four inches apart uh, three of them on and then we've got just a little babby up length we've got a four inch 0.9 and we've got an 18s f1 magwai hook on i love them hooks i think yeah, i've had i've had some massive fish out on them they're so light but they stay so sharp and they're pretty big so i do like to use standout baits you know like double caster double maggot uh three pinky something like that pinky and a maggot whatever we'll go through that in a, in a separate one um but it's just that rig it's really positive so when there's a lot of fish there get straight down to him gets job done now the other rig i've not really done a lot of this style of fishing i'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you but as i said when you get the likes of matt godfrey will raisin jamie hughes you know talking about these sort of like spread bolt rigs or tapered shotting you've got to take note and listen 
So float wise, again, you see we've got that rugby ball shaped float on. Wire stem, as I said to you before on the other rig, it's not making a difference because all your fishing is done in the bottom third part of the water. Back shots on just above it, exactly the same elastic. And now it gets interesting when we come down to this bit here. So I'm going to say the main shot is probably where I'd have that Olivet on the other, the other rig. Now what we've got on here, if Rich can, he's zooming in on that Richard, of course he is. We've got, we've got some number eights to start with and then we come into number tens through through the water. Now what their argument is and why they feel these rigs are so important, I mean Jay's in, himself said he'd probably never use like bulk and droppers ever again in the old wide world which is proper doing my head in that because I love using bulk and droppers but it'd be really interesting today to see this rig in action. I've, as I said I've used them a few times but never in sort of like this depth. So what's happening, Rather, where is that one? It's getting straight down and it's it's bringing you know the the bait in but not as natural as this one this is going straight down then obviously it's sort of like kicking kicking everything out so it's falling a hell of a lot more natural than what uh, a balkan droppers was so it I, I can't wait to use it to be fair It'd be really good main lines exactly the same 0.15 got exactly the same hook and hook length on um whether we change them to like number 11s just so it brings it in even slower, that'll probably be more so for, you know, F1s or, you know, if you're just targeting roach. But again, we're targeting ideally these bigger skimmers, but, you know, there's that big hiding. There's, there's all sorts in here. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of them things I can't wait to, to, to try out and get going. And it'd be interesting to show you laying the rigs in as well. But uh, yeah, them's the two rigs, you know, nice and simple. We don't need to complicate anything. Fishing's fishing, it all comes down to how you're presenting the bait and what you're feeding. But we'll cover all that in a separate video for you lovely lot. Squiddle! Where? <laughs> Inflections. Um, Quantities you're putting in, but we'll f uh, focus it off. Oh, f off f head. It's up there now, isn't it? Richard! One more time. Right, go ahead. <laughs>